Hello, my name is Alexander Hart. I am a current M2 at the Carver College of Medicine. And thank you for viewing my talk on optimizing bariatric surgery outcomes, the impact of preoperative elevated hemoglobin A1C levels on composite perioperative outcome measures. I have nothing to disclose. The use of bariatric surgery in the management of obesity and related conditions has significantly increased in the US over the past decade. And diabetes is seen at a high pro proportion in the morbidly obese population, up to 25%. Bariatric surgery has been shown to be efficacious in improving postoperative glycemic control in obese populations. High preoperative hemoglobin A1C levels are known to increase postoperative morbidity in a variety of surgical cohorts. And there's a lack of data on the impact of optimal preoperative glycemic control on morbidity and mortality in the field of bariatric surgery. The aim of this study is to analyze the impact of the preoperative hemoglobin A1C on outcomes among, among patients undergoing Ruin Y gastric by bypass or sleeve gastrectomy using the MBSA QIP PUF database. We included patients undergoing a standard laparoscopic or robotic Ruin Y gastric bypass or sleeve gastrectomy. Patients were excluded if they had a missing hemoglobin A1C level, a prior mid gut surgery, a conversion of surgical approach, or if the surgery was considered emergent. Elevated hemoglobin A1C was defined as being greater than seven. And the outcome was a composite morbidity and mortality measure based off the current literature, which included ventilator requirement after 48 hours, unplanned intubation, pneumonia, superficial deep and organ space surgical site infection, pulmonary embolism, 30-day reintervention, myocardial infarction, sepsis, septic shock, stroke, cardiac arrest, renal insufficiency, or a vein thrombosis requiring treatment. And multivariate logistic regression was used with this outcome measure. In univariate analysis, among 44,814 patients, we compared the elevated group versus the standard group. And it was found that the elevated group had an increased rate of a higher proportion of male gender, black race, a higher average older age, and a lower average BMI. There was a higher uh, proportion of people in an elevated ASA category of being greater than or equal to three. And there was a higher proportion who were smokers within one year of the surgery. Comparing intraoperative information, the elevated hemoglobin A1C group had increased rates of ruin Y gastric bypass, a, a physician assistant, nurse practitioner, or registered nurse as first assist, and increased average operative times. These were then put into a logistic regression model, which is seen here in the forest plot. Here, you can see that, average, that elevated age, black race, and elevated BMI all increase the odds of post-operative morbidity and mortality. And underneath this, you can see that being in an elevated ASA category was seen to not significantly increase this odds. Well, looking at the elevated hemoglobin A1C level, though, there is a significant increased odds of, of adverse postoperative outcomes, indicating that it might be a better measure than the ASA category to identify patients that are at risk for postoperative complications. And also, you can see here, based off type of surgery performed, sleeve gastrectomy had a lower odds of having adverse outcomes. Lastly, the lead assist level, if there is no assist or a trainee, whether, whether a resident or a minimally invasive surgery fellow, there was an increased odds of adverse postoperative complications, but this risk was not seen if you had either a weight loss surgeon or another attending surgeon as first assist. The study did have some limitations that should be considered. The composite outcome adds difficulty in clinical interpretation, but we felt it was necessary to use it because there's a small n for each complication. So for a robust analysis, we had to compile them. And Hemoglobin A1C has very systemic effects, which we did not feel would be adequately captured by one complication. 
there is an unequal representation in the composite outcome. Two thirds of the cohort excluded was excluded because of missing hemoglobin A1C levels, which could affect the interpretation. There is a lack of information on current or previous management of diabetes, socioeconomic status, insurance status, or hospital volume, which is a limitation of the database itself. And we are not able to identify outcomes beyond 30 days, which is also a limitation of the database. In conclusion, this study identified high hemoglobin A1C in presence of trainees in the OR as potentially modifiable preoperative risk factors for adverse events following bariatric surgery. Improving preoperative glycemic control prior to bariatric surgery may be a feasible goal, which could represent an important quality improvement measure. Further fo studies focusing on surgical education would be warranted to implement safe and effective training in the field of bariatric surgery. Thank you for viewing my talk.